Station, this is Houston. Are you ready for the event? Houston, we are ready for the event. Okay, great. KGO TV, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call station for a voice check. Station, this is KGO TV. How do you hear me? Greg, we have you loud and clear. Welcome aboard the International Space Station. Thank you for that. You guys looking good today. Um, let's just start with progress. What are you hearing about the loss of that payload? Well, obviously that's uh, uh, you know potentially a significant impact on operations up here, not only uh, because of the cargo that uh, you know will not be delivered now, but also the implications to the booster and uh, you know implications to Soyuz launches, et cetera. So um, we're still trying to figure out uh, what the exact impacts are going to be, uh, what our path forward is going to be. Uh, so we're, we're kind of in the wait and see, uh, up here in the wait and see um, mindset. Obviously, there's a lot of uh, people uh, formulating plans and backup plans on the ground. Down here, we've heard that, you know, if they can't pull something together, that a couple of you guys might be coming home early. Does that uh, affect any of you? No, I don't. I don't think there's any uh, chance of coming home early. Um, there, there are. There is a chance of, of maybe uh, the three of us that were supposed to come back on September 8th to be delayed. Um, so, so that's something that we're looking at as well. well I uh, was watching pictures of the hurricane a moment ago. Uh, I don't know if you guys, uh, if all of you got to see it, uh, but uh, how, how? What do you think of that thing? And then, where abouts are you now? Yeah, we just uh, passed over Tahiti in the South Pacific, still heading to the southeast. It's night out this way. Uh, and, uh, I grew up on the Gulf Coast. I've seen a lot of hurricanes, and a uh, hurricane is a scary thing no matter what angle you're looking at it from, and it certainly is. A, it's, a, it's really big, and we've seen, uh, we saw it uh, several days in a row and really saw a big change uh, evident yesterday when we passed over. It was much more condensed. Much, It, it just appeared solid. Uh, it was like a big dome of solid clouds with the eye having formed really well. Mike, I was looking at some of your photographs, and I think you tweeted one that said, this is the best picture I've ever taken. How's the, what is it like up there, uh, to look at how taking pictures? You feel like a tourist? Look at how taking pictures. You feel like a tourist? Uh, you know, not a little bit like a tourist, I guess. It's in, enjoying the fact of, of just being here. It's a lot of hard work a lot of the time, but when you get a chance to uh, to look outside, uh, I really, you know, like to do that. And I've had, uh, you know, a fun, just a personal interest in photography, and especially the low-light photography. We've got some cameras here that are really good at uh, at picking up. That was that 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 picture you saw was illuminated by starlight and moonlight uh, not that was taken at nighttime it's a lot of fun you can see a lot of details with the stars in the background Mike I've seen your stuff too and I've seen you playing with the new 3d camera do you, do you have that thing there to show us yeah we actually do hold on I'll get it out So this is uh, this is the ERB two, and uh, it's uh, one of the one of the three D cameras that we have on board, and this is the camera that we used a few weeks ago to make the uh, first live HD three uh, D uh, transmission to the ground. It looks so light. Yeah, it's light now. It's so <laughs> it's so light it floats. Satoshi, they let you play with that thing at all? Yeah, we've uh, we've uh, done some filming with it. All right, we've uh, we've done some filming with it, uh, both uh, recorded um, documentation and also um, the live the live stuff that we talked about. You think it's going to be an educational tool? 
Well, I think it's uh, certainly going to be an educational tool. I think it's a, it's a tool that we can use to help uh, people share in the experience of living and working in space. Uh, obviously, it's going to be uh, very important uh, f from the educational aspects. But also, you know, we, we could use this to help us with robotics, some of the uh, fine uh, uh, work that we have to do outside. You know, if we have a 3D view, it's going gonna, it's gonna to help that immensely. So there's, there's a lot of practical applications uh, to this as well. Uh, I'd like to ask Satoshi, uh, you know, what he's been working on up there. Okay, uh, I've been working on protein crystallization uh, experiment. Uh, we are making uh, cancer remedy related protein, uh, in particular, uh, angio angiogenesis inhibitor, uh, which uh, when uh, cancer cells grow, the additional uh, vessels grow around the cancer cells. So if you block that uh, growth, then uh, it leads to cancer, cancer remedy. So uh, we are looking forward to the uh, development of new uh, medicine. A lot of people don't know that you're, you're a doctor. Well, <laughs> we, 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 we didn't know that either. Uh, be, because our, our friends don't call me doctor, so I forgot that. They ever come? They ever come to you and say, "Hey, you got an aspirin?" <laughs> sure. <laughs> Um, Ron, back to you. Uh, besides taking pictures, what are you what are you working on these days? Well, there, you know, right now we're in the f uh, pretty much the full utilization mode of the uh, space station. So we've at any at any given time, there's probably you know three or four or five experiments going on, and we're involved in a lot of that activity. So a good part of our day uh, across the across the whole station on all six crew members is doing some of the science that this this amazing orbital research facility was built to support. So uh, that's been very rewarding. How long do it's quite huge? How long does it take you to traverse from from one end of it to the other? Well, we haven't haven't done any races yet, or tried to set any new world records. But uh, I bet you it's probably if you. I mean, it, there's there, it's not a straight line. So so everything is not lined up in a straight line. There's different modules off in different directions. So if you were going to actually go and, and and fly through every module in the space station, it would take a, at least five minutes or maybe maybe more. But if you were just going to go from the front end to to the uh, aft end, just a couple of minutes of of uh, fast flying through those modules will get you there. Let me ask Mike this. I, I never cease to marvel at, uh, ever since I was a kid, to marvel at what NASA does and, you know, Apollo, the shuttle program, now ISS. Uh, how about you guys? Do you ever stop being amazed? You know, there's, there's moments, there's times when it's work, you know, because right now I've, I've spent all morning working on a carbon dioxide removal uh, system. That has a little trouble with it, so I've I've torn into it, and I'm, you know, uh, putting some jumper wires in to work around a piece of uh, non-functional equipment inside of it, and uh, you know, you forget you're in space except when your tools start to float away from you. Uh, but you know, I think like all of us, I grew up watching the space program in the early days and dreaming, you know, what if would such a thing be possible? And the answer is yes, it is, and I, we know that we're some of the most fortunate people you know, on or off the planet to be living our dream every day. And this is a fantastic experience, and I'm making the best of it. Thanks, you guys, for taking the time to talk to me. Really appreciate it. Station, this is Houston. Great talking to you. Thanks. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the KGO TV portion of the event. Please stand by for a voice check from space.com. Station, this is uh, Tarek Malik from Space.com. Uh, how do you hear me? Hi, Tarek. Great to talk to you. Welcome aboard the International Space Station. Great. Well, uh, thank all of you.
you for having some time to talk with us uh, today. Um, <clears throat> I wanted to uh, uh, let you know we did uh, ask our readers uh, if they had questions for you, and the first one that came back uh, you probably will be expecting was uh, the first one I was going to have. Uh, we all saw the failed progress launch tomorrow, and we were wondering what your thoughts were on it, if it uh, caused any concerns on uh, uh, resupply or, or Ron, your, your return to Earth. Um, can you give us an insight on what you're thinking? Well, well, there's you know there's a lot of uh, you know considerations to think about uh, in light of the uh, the uh, progress failure. Uh, you know, first is you know what about the cargo that was on there? You know what you know we have to make do with now without that cargo. What are the uh, impacts of that? You know, what, was there time critical things on there that we needed to get on board? Other things that you know we were really running short on. So we're looking at all those things, um, but probably a bigger impact is the booster itself, and uh, you know realizing that that's the same booster that, that we launched, launched the Soyuz uh, spacecraft on. We have a Soyuz launch coming up right now, and and what's the impacts going to be to that launch, uh, and then what uh, is it going to be the impacts to to um, our our return to Earth um, that that is presently planned for September 8th. So you know all those discussions are going on right now. Uh, we don't. Uh, have a lot of decisions made yet because you know we want to make sure that we have the right course of action and so we're going to take a little bit of time and think about it uh, make sure that we have every, all the facts together before uh, we go on, a, on a, and pick a, on a game plan so um, you know we're, we're up here we're kind of in the wait and see uh, mindset where we are fully prepared to support whatever decisions are made um, we've uh, done a great job supplying the space station uh, and getting ourselves ready for for really continued use throughout the the rest of the decade so uh, you know from a from a consumables point of view, I think we're we're sitting pretty good for for a little while, so uh, that's not a major concern at the at the moment. Ron, would you welcome uh, an extra some extra time on the space station with your uh, your Russian crewmates if that was the case, or are you pretty eager to get back home? Well, I mean, obviously, I would have mixed feelings. I mean, I've I've been away from home for a long time, but uh, you know, a lot of people are away from home, you know, doing things that they they believe in. And um, but you know, what it would afford me is an opportunity to continue to you know the, the make the best use of uh, the time up here. Uh, you know, I'd have more time uh, for the science that we're doing, more time for the outreach, more time to share the experience uh, with as many people as we can on the ground. So it, you know. There's, uh, you know, there's an upside and a downside, and uh, you know, whatever the decision is, you know, I think it, it'll be the best for the program, and uh, we're, we're fully support it. Thanks. Uh, the other thing on on everyone's mind, on at least on the East Coast here, uh, is Hurricane Irene, and uh, I, I've seen some of the amazing videos and images that uh, uh, you and your crewmates have been back down. Uh, and I'm wondering, uh, maybe for uh, for Mike, what your impressions are of uh, of the storm itself. Uh, and uh, and the impact it might have um, as as you see it from from space. You bet, Tarek. Uh, I grew up on the Gulf Coast of Texas. So I've seen a lot of hurricanes uh, through the years. And a hurricane is a scary thing. It's certainly a scary thing when it's uh, bearing down on top of you. It's a scary thing when you're out of town and watching it head towards your home, like uh, Ron and I both were when uh, I came ashore three years ago. Uh, and it's a, it's a terrifying thing from up above, too. We saw a big change in the structure of the storm over the several days that we've watched her, especially yesterday. The, the, the differences were very pronounced. It was very uniform, kind of a dome shape to the whole thing with the uh, eye fully formed. We did not see the eye. You could tell where it was starting to swirl tight uh, two days ago, but yesterday the eye, you could see the eye wall and down into the, uh, down into the eye itself. So you know that is a powerful storm. And uh, there's, uh, you know, those are never good news when they're heading your way. So our, you know, prayers and thoughts are really with the uh, people in our path. Well, thank you. We're based in New York City. I know we're we're keeping a close eye on it as well. Um, some of the our readers uh, are curious just how your your life is on on the space station. And uh, for Satoshi, um, two readers, Chris Maxwell and Adrian Ruiz, they're wondering what you miss the most about uh, Earth, uh, your life at home. And if you ever feel lonely up there? Well, uh, with regard to everyday life, <laughs> I miss a uh, hot bathtub most because it's it's a kind of Japanese culture, and uh, at the end of the day, uh, to uh, sink in a hot bathtub and relax, it, it's it's awesome. So I miss that, but. Uh, Living on board the station is very good because uh, we perform scientific, scientific experiments and we have uh, 
excellent uh, Earth view and star views. So uh, I like working on board here. Great. Uh, thanks. And another question, and this might be for you, Ron, um, uh, is, is from Tricia Harvey, and she wants to know uh, how the aurora borealis uh, looks from, uh, from space, uh, if it undulates like it, uh, it appears to on Earth, or is it just a, a static glow? Well, that's a really good question. Um, it depends. It depends uh, where you are in the orbit. It depends wh where, um, you know, what part of the Earth you're over. And usually when we see auroras, you know, we see them kind of out towards the horizon. And uh, they're, they're, no matter where they are, uh, um, they're always spectacular. And, and yes, they, they look like, you know, dancing luminescent waves of, uh, of vapor. Um, it's just absolutely breathtaking. But I had one opportunity a, a few months ago where uh, you know I opened up the uh, shutters of the cupola and I was just you know blown away by this view it it seemed as though we were flying through the auroras i mean it was just this you know glowing vapor all around us and it was just absolutely spectacular so it's a uh, you know it's always is great to, uh, to see that mike's taken some great uh, photos of the auroras so it's uh, you know that's one of the uh, fascinating things that we get to see uh, on a fairly regular basis up here so it's uh, it's uh, you know one of the the joys that we have to see that thanks um and uh, this question uh, uh, comes from a, another reader, and uh, I was actually going to ask it as well. Um, you're several months into your increment now on the space station. Uh, you travel around the planet at uh, more than 17,000 miles an hour, and you've already had one visiting shuttle and several months ahead. Um, uh, we're just wondering, first of all, how the mission has gone so far, and does it feel like the time goes a lot faster in space because you're so busy than it does when you're on Earth? Well, um, yeah, it's been, you know, I've been up here, I, I guess, closing on five months now, and uh, it's been a very, very busy five months. You know, we saw two shuttle missions, uh, you know, the uh, undocking of a, a ATV. I, I, I can't even re remember how many progresses have come come and gone. So it's uh, it's been very, very busy. Uh, we've had uh, Soyuz docking, Soyuz undocking. Um, but really, the you know, the, the main thing that, that this time period, I think, uh, uh, is important important for is we saw a transition. We saw a transition from the construction of the International Space Station to full utilization of the International Space Station, and, and we, we've all uh, been able to witness that and just see an amazement how, you know, the science that we're doing on board has just ramped up, and, uh, you know, we're, we, every day, you know, the whole uh, space station is, is fully busy, you know, cranking out science, and, uh, you know, I think that's going to lead to some really great discoveries. Uh, I think it's, it's not only going to be, you know, a stepping stone for continued exploration of our solar system. Uh, uh, I think it's also going to show that uh, you know we've the research that has been conducted on board here has improved life on Earth because it's, it simply can't be conducted anywhere else. So uh, seeing that and uh, being a part of that uh, has been very exciting. Uh, to answer the other part of the question, uh, looking back over the last five months, it, it because so much has happened, it, it really does seem uh, like a long time. <laughs> it, it hasn't gone by in the blink of an eye because so much has has been accomplished. Um, but you know, on a day-to-day -day basis, though, the days go—you're so busy, though, that the days uh, go by pretty fast. Thanks. And um, perhaps for uh, uh, for Mike, um, this question from Ian Garrett—he wants to know, um, and I think I do too, what you see um, from life on the station are the top three improvements uh, that will be vital for. Um, for say a, to actually make a colony uh, living on a space station, uh, uh, you know, viable. Uh, what do you, what do you really need uh, up there um, all the time to make that work? Wow, that is a really interesting question. The top three things we would need up here. Uh, I think, uh, I mean, to really colonize, you'd need to have a way, I think, to grow some food. We, you know, we eat a lot of the thermal stabilized food and dehydrated food, and in a lot of ways it's like camping food or uh, military MREs, uh, that I think some fresh food would go a long way toward improving uh, uh, life on here, uh, you know, life in space. And we get a little bit on when the cargo vehicles come, they bring some uh, fruit and vegetables, and that's a delight to uh, bite into a, a tomato or even, believe it or not, to bite into an onion. We slice onions up into uh, into big wedges and uh, eat them with a little bit of salt because it's a taste of earth. Um, other than that, 
I, you know, I, I, we, we have what we need. Uh, the, uh, the window views, are, I think, are really important. You, uh, if you don't have a window view, then you, could be, you may as well be working uh, you know, in a trailer with a zero gravity machine, which of course doesn't exist. Uh, but uh, the windows to see the Earth, to escape just a little bit and, and look at places below that you dream about visiting someday as you enjoy the, uh, the sights from above. Uh, I think the third thing that uh, would be really great if you're going to colonize uh, the space would be a transporters. Transporters would be really good so we could go home for the weekend. Thank you so much. I think they'd be great here for life on Earth, too, uh, Mike. Uh, I, I would love to stay and chat with you all day, but I, unfortunately I'm, I'm out of time. Thank you all, Mike Fossum, Ron Garrett, uh, Satoshi Prokawa, uh, for uh, your time today. And uh, uh, all the best for the rest of your mission. Thanks. Thank you. Hey, I think the last time I talked to you, I was living on the bottom of the ocean. So it's good to, good to talk to you again. That's right. It's great. Thank you. Station, this is Houston ACR. Thank you. That concludes the event. Thank you to KGO-TV and Space.com. Station, we are now resuming operational communications.